we're looking at W.K. Clifford's piece, The Ethics of Belief. And normally, even though this is a work in epistemology, it is considered in the context of philosophy of religion. And we'll talk about why that is appropriate to do so. He begins his article by telling a story. So we have a story of a ship owner who has an older ship. It's taken many trips. He knows that, you know, maybe it's time to give it a, a refurbishing and, and redo th some things before it would go off into the sea again. Um, but then he says, you know, it's made several trips safely. Re remember the context here. Clifford is writing in the mid-19th century. So ships have traveled across the ocean from Britain to the United States. And that's the presumed trip here, uh, you know, for centuries prior to this. However, it, not all ships make it. It is relative to today. Uh, a little bit unsafe to make this kind of a trip. So the possibility of a, a ship sinking is a realistic possibility. Now the ship owner considers this, but then reassures himself that everything's going to be fine. People are going to be okay. But the ship goes down. And the ship owner was guilty of their lives. Now, not only is he guilty of their lives, what Clifford is really significantly emphasizing here, he's guilty of being too credulous. Now, even if we altered the case, even if the ship did not go down, Clifford says he's just as guilty because in both cases, he would have believed the ship was safe without sufficient evidence. Clifford uses this phrase that he has no right to believe that the ship was safe. Thus the title, the ethics of belief. He did something morally wrong in regards to his beliefs. So Clifford is very concerned about people being too credulous. Now, in the context, he's talking about ships, right? Thinking that a ship is going to be safe when it's not. Now, how does that relate to religion? Why is this in the context of philosophy of religion? Well, for one, Clifford gives really strong hints that he's talking about religious belief in the essay. And he is making a broader claim. That's certainly the case. That's also really evident. But here, even though he doesn't talk about believing in God, he never says God's name. He, he doesn't refer to God explicitly. He doesn't use the term religion. He does use religious phrases, and he uses small quotes from the Bible. So he uses terms like providence with a capital P. He describes our ability to believe or not as a sacred faculty. He uses the phrase den of thieves in a, in a religious concept like sinful. He uses this phrase cry peace when there is no peace, which is from the book of Micah. He uh, uses this phrase who hath made Israel to sin. So by the use of those phrases, it's clear that he is very concerned about religious belief, even though the context is to be applied for all beliefs, as we will see. And he's talking about the ethics belief. And in, in doing so, right, it's the origin of the belief that's important to Clifford. Whether or not it's moral to believe something depends on the context in which you believe it. Do you have enough evidence? So it's not whether it turns out to be true or false, right? So in the ship owner case, even if the ship had made it across safely, the ship owner was just as guilty, says Clifford because he believed without enough evidence. And so the main question to ask when you're determining the morality of belief is, was the belief justified? Was it firmly grounded on evidence? That's the concern. Was there enough evidence for your belief? 
And when a belief is held strongly before proper investigation, then you are biased. And even, even if you go on to investigate, you're not going to be fair because you already have a strong belief. And Clifford thought that this was very problematic. So what do you do if you already have a belief prior to investigating? Well, the prescription in that case, when evidence is incomplete, is to withhold belief. You just simply not believe in that kind of circumstance. Now, we've talked about this applying to ship owners and religious beliefs. What other beliefs? Clifford says that all beliefs are important. They're all important because all of our beliefs will eventually affect our actions. And he says, even if we don't talk about it, even if the belief is private, it will have an effect on other people because our words and our actions are dictated by our beliefs. We say what we believe. Our actions are motivated by what we believe is true. So we have to guard our beliefs. We have to be very careful about what we believe, all of our beliefs. So how serious is he? You know, how, how serious does he take this? Well, he says, if any belief is held on insufficient evidence, it's a stolen pleasure. The idea that it is immoral. And whenever we believe something on insufficient reasons, we weaken our power of self-control. We become less virtuous, right? We, we, we become intemperate people, and that's bad. In doing so, we endanger our society. We prompt others around us to lose their habit of testing beliefs when we're not in that habit. And Clifford says the ultimate result of this, if we quit investigating prior to believing, then our whole society will fall into savagery. That's his term, savagery. It's going to be the collapse of civilization if we're not careful enough. And so Clifford says it that way. If I'm not careful about what I believe, I show to others that I do not value truth. I encourage others to lie to me. And this is a quotation from the article here. The credulous person is a father to the liar and the cheat, right? When you believe without sufficient evidence, you encourage people to lie. You encourage people to cheat. And once people start lying and cheating, society will collapse. So this is extremely serious and important. Now, how should we put his thesis? What is the thesis? Well, it seems pretty clear we could say it this way. It's wrong to believe upon insufficient evidence. That's his thesis. But we might, you know, have some questions or qualifications. Well, is it sometimes okay? You know, uh, maybe if it's at night when you're pondering your life and you just think some things and kind of imagine and believe some things that might not be the case is, is when you can't check it out. Is that okay? No, he says it's wrong always to believe upon insufficient evidence. Now you might think, well, you know, not in every situation, right? He doesn't think that. I mean, there are some circumstances you might be in. Maybe you're at a ball game and you're just not carefully thinking about what you're believing at that circumstance, right? And he says, no, it's wrong always, everywhere to believe upon insufficient evidence. Now, you might question this again. What about for, for some people? What about if I form some political beliefs without really investigating and I'm not going to vote? Right, so it's not, that's not a problem for me because I'm not even going to vote, right? Clifford says, no, it's wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe upon insufficient evidence. Now, finally, you might think, aren't there some things that just aren't as, port as important as other things? 
you know, believing what time a, a show starts and you're not even concerned whether you see the show at the beginning or not. I mean, aren't there some things when it's okay not to investigate thoroughly? And Clifford says, no, it is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe anything upon insufficient evidence. Notice the quotations on this. This is a direct quote from the article. It's italicized there. It's clearly the thesis that he has. It's always wrong everywhere for anyone to believe absolutely anything upon insufficient evidence. That's the thesis. Now let's, let's think about this a little bit more. What criticisms might be raised against this thesis? Well, this might be a good question to ask. Does Clifford's maxim meet its own standards? The thesis itself, that it's wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe anything upon insufficient evidence. Now, wait a minute. How much evidence do we have for this? We have Clifford saying it. We have other people, certainly, who don't agree with Clifford. It doesn't seem like we have enough evidence to believe it. By its own standard, we should not believe it. It's self-refuting, right? If, if, we, if that's the thesis that it's wrong always everywhere and for anyone to believe anything upon insufficient evidence, well, that is a controversial philosophical thesis. There's not enough evidence to believe that. So we shouldn't believe it. Now, that's a problem. That is a big problem. Now, another thing to consider here is what's the argument for the thesis? What are the reasons given for us to believe it? Well, the argument is largely based on what benefits or harm will result by following or not following the principle, right? Clifford emphasizes the problems that might occur if you're not careful in what you believe. Now, okay, so that should motivate one to be more careful. However, we should note here that this is a consequential fallacy. Right? It's not so much as an argument, it just says, believe this or bad things are going to happen. Now, that's something that I would call a common method of persuasion. It might be effective at persuading people, but it's not a good philosophical argument. Right? Uh, that's that's a, a bad argument, a bad reason to believe something just because something is bad is going to happen if you don't. Right? The, the standard should be whether it's true or not, whether you have reason to think it's true or not. And he doesn't really give us an argument to think that it's true. And just one last criticism. This is in the order of importance here, right? The first one is the most important. The second one is, is significant and substantial. The third one, we might just ask Clifford, what about those situations in which a quick decision is required? We are often in situations where we have to make a quick decision. We cannot stand there or sit there and contemplate the decision forever. Consider whom to vote for. You know, there's a day in which you cannot vote after that day. You, you have to do it. But more importantly, if you have a job, if you're a police officer, if you're the CEO of a corporation, if you're an attorney in a trial, you have to make decisions quickly sometimes. And it's often not a situation that you can pause to investigate. And so people often have to make quick decisions and just go with the best evidence they have at the time without stopping and putting their belief on hold. We have to act sometimes. And so this also does seem like it's problematic. Now, having raised those criticisms, we should acknowledge that Clifford raises a significant point. And a, a problem, generally speaking, with people is not that they uh, spend too much time investigating, right? So Clifford is right in this sense to encourage us to be more careful about what we believe, to not believe so easily, to investigate to take time when we can, 
And especially with those really important beliefs in life, we should do so.